Okay. So first of all, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you from all of the different countries, all of the different places, the different time zones for joining us today. Like it's been really, really awesome. We've had, you know, well over um, 106 people online at any given time sharing these different ideas. We know that even more people were registered and have been able to come and have been able to go. And that's just been absolutely fantastic. And I have just really, really enjoyed meeting everybody I've gotten to meet in my breakout groups. You all are rock stars and I can't wait to like get to know you better. So part of like what I wanted to do today before we kind of just summarize the general topics that we talked about and maybe, you know, brainstorm in our own minds, reflect, I guess, a little bit, you know, is let's go back over what the critical zone is. The critical zone is from the top of the canopy, canopy down to the depths of uh, bedrock. It is the integration of all of you, all of your different disciplines, all of the traditional and non-traditional pathways that we've taken forward, all of the things that we can bring to bear on the problems that we're facing that are, are really relevant to our society as many of the um, uh, uh, presentations have demonstrated. So during our reflection, I think it's important for us to think about how did this symposium go? Did we reach our goals? Are we on our way? Now, I wanna put this in the context of this is a multi-year project for us to be able to build this community up. And we wanna do things for you. We wanna make sure that we are serving you in the best way that we can. So what I'm gonna do is hopefully it'll work. I'm, I'm gonna try a couple of different uh, uh, polls so that we can actually assess to some degree um, the effectiveness of this cyber uh, symposium. So let's give this a try and we'll see. So this is the, the poll V that I'm gonna ask you to go into. This is the uh, uh, QR code. So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes uh, to sign on with these um, ones as we wait here. And the importance again of these is, is you know, we really wanna be able to learn and assessing these kinds of things is important for us in our learning uh, as we move forward. All right, I'll give it one more or 30 more seconds. I never know how patient to be. Okay. I think I counted to 30 in my head, but I'm not really sure. Kind of got lost. So um, on a scale of one to five, uh, where one is very little and five is a whole ton, I couldn't think of a better word, how um, has your knowledge of the critical zone concepts changed over the course of this cyber seminar? So I have things turned on. It doesn't actually seem like it's turned on on this end. It might oh, be okay. Oh, ah, that was wild. Um, they're on, hold on one second. I put them the slides into here. Is there anything else I needed that, to do? Is that app open? Is Poll EV open on your computer? Yeah, Poll EV is open. Okay. I think you need to activate it. Oh. Hmm. It said insert activities. Hmm. Well, here, I'll make a poll. That was interesting. I can insert them again. Should I just do that? Sure. Well, just try that. Okay. Uh, hold on. There we go. Try this once more. And if it's a technology failure, well, so be it. There could be worse ones. Exactly. All right. So let's try this once more. Uh, is there something I have to hit down here? For me, I had to hit something on the website to activate it. And even still, it didn't like 100% work. Hmm. Is it anything coming up? No, oh. it's not. It's still saying it's not active. Okay. Well, I guess one thing that you could do is instead of just doing it right here, 
if you don't mind just putting it into the chat box for now, just so that we can get an idea of it, we'll roll with that as a, a way to get going because no reason to not um, provide a little bit of feedback and then we can figure it out from there, you know? Sounds good. We'll send to out an assessment later too. Yeah, we'll send out one of those. So um, uh, why don't we go ahead and these are the welcome slides. It just keeps going. All right, so. All right, so why don't we go ahead and just, why don't you enter into the chat box if you're doing this? Um, uh, how do you feel? Do you feel like you've learned um, more about uh, the critical zone concepts in this one? One being not very much, five being a ton. I'll let you have a minute to answer in the chat box. So on my end, and because I might be seeing things the rest of you aren't, there are lots of threes and fours and fives, lots and lots of fours, fair number of fives, lots of threes. That's absolutely yes. fantastic. That's fantastic. That's like, that's, to me, that's amazing to be able to get even those kinds of numbers. All right. Now the next one I want to ask about here is um, on a scale of one to five, where one's not really, and five is like totally expanded my CZ network, because again, I couldn't think of another way to say it. How effective do you feel the cyber seminar, was it helping to build your community, your critical zone community? So why don't you go ahead again, one to five, go ahead and put it in the chat box. We'll give you a minute to answer on that one. Broader range here, um, everything from one to five, uh, lots of threes, it looks like. Um, but yeah, all over the map. So um, right. I, would say, yeah, I would go with three as my median. All right, perfect. Thanks so much again. And then we'll go on to the next one, which we'll have the last one to five one, which is um, on a scale of one to five, one being uninspired and five is very inspired. How well did the cyber seminar, inspire, cyber seminar and symposium inspire you to build inclusive tools into your leadership practices? I would say lots of, I've seen only three through fives, lots of fours. Um, a shout out to Crystal Eng. Um, yeah, woohoo, she's awesome. That's absolutely great. And I think that's like, that was one of, like, I, I'm really thrilled with these feedback. And, you know, we'll fit, we'll send these out again. But the last question I have, you know, and I want you to toss them in there if you can, is what uh, could the CZ Research Coordination Network um, do more of, right? What could we do more of to help? you feel inspired to conduct critical zone science or to build your skills and or to build your skills to become an inclusive leader. So if you can think of a couple things right now um, and put them in the chat box, Comedy could share those with us for a minute and then we'll kind of just go through what were some of the flavors of the last couple days. It sounds good and if you do not have that off the top of your head, no fears, we will ask you a follow-up email uh, a little later on. Well, I'll let you continue to put some of these things in here. Again, I know that these are, it's the end of a day and everyone's feeling pretty exhausted. So let's go ahead and just go through, I'm gonna skip forward and talk about what are some of the things that we have, some of the big pictures that have emerged. So Holly Barnard, right, she led us off um, with thinking about how trees are just incredible tools for understanding and investigating the critical zone. And one of the things I thought that was super sweet to see across so many different um, groups and different presentations was how much plants matter to engineering our subsurface, to interacting with our subsurface. And that even if you're a geologist, you should care about plants, right? You should care about them as a hydrologist, as a microbial ecologist, as a um, biogeochemist. And so, you know, 
um, Jordan Hayes then led us off with thinking about how do we use geophysics to think about how these plants, how these trees, how they're governing water flow, but also came back to this idea of how the, the physical subsurface is structured and what an important role that structure plays on our kind of the way that the systems weather and what the diversity of those structures are, the heterogeneity of them, and kind of how we can begin to use these tools to kind of build a bigger picture. Jenny Druhan also wanted to say structure matters. The way that this subsurface, this large theta zone and the Eel River system, how it stores water specific, specifically within the rocks itself, and then how those are accessed by the trees, this subsurface structure is so important for us to understand. We can now start to use these near, geof near surface geophysical tools. We can use these kind of um, horizontal uh, wells that they put in. We can begin to understand what these systems look like. And not only are these interactions controlling the water that's moving through there, not only is the vegetation impacting that water, but it's actually impacting the biogeochemistry, right? As trees are pumping carbon dioxide down there, they're driving weathering reactions to take place, and we're beginning to understand what that actually means, right, for the chemistry of our streams themselves. And that's such a vital component of what's taking place. Eve came back to us and gave us a legacy of thinking about, well, before we had air pollution that was driving changes in, in the chemistry at the near surface, and that had really important implications for our streamwater chemistry. But we're actually still doing that by putting things like fertilizers on these systems or pesticides that are rich in sulfur that are having similar effects to these systems themselves. And how critical it is for us to not only take this critical zone kind of approach in these systems, but how do we really talk to our farmers? You know, what is the kind of language? How do we work with them to get them the data they need so they can do things like change their, the irrigation management plans that they have for these systems so they can reduce the amount of sulfur fluxes in this instance that are coming off the landscape? Leo Flores brought us back out and said, okay, well, what about, how does the climate and all of these things, how is it impacting potentially the structure of the subsurface? Maybe it's impacting our soils. And so that impacts overland flow and, and impacts the, the uh, recharge to groundwater systems. Maybe it also is, we need to also think about how this gets integrated into our large climate models because this reality of these soils, this reality of the hill slopes, right? The more we can get some kind of depiction of this in large kind of uh, climate models, large land surface models, the better we can actually understand the feedback, the interaction, which is so critical here, between the critical zone and the climate. Oftentimes we think so unidirectionally, the climate is driving processes in the critical zone but we're finding out the reorganization of the critical zone may have large impacts on how and the direction of which that climate is taking. So we really need to begin to understand these processes. And then Julia did a wonderful job of also coming at that same idea. How do we glean some information from patterns and processes that are occurring over large spatial areas, right? The whole US she showed us. And then we drive down into them and we examine them at one specific area where we can look at multiple measurements that are taking place. But then we can take that back up and that can enhance and understand our processes. And then in this duration, in this iteration of information, right, between kind of the very specific picture and the more blurry image, right, we begin to understand what's actually the detail of our Earth system, our critical zones. Julia also was able to tell us that she had a wild path towards critical zone science, right? Art, art school, right? Psychology. But also shared with us was Rachel's path, also secured us in so many different manners, and some of which, you know, are important reasons why we need to be good mentors and good leaders over time to help out individuals, but also important because this diversity, this diversity and the, the knowledge that they've gained over their, their lifespans are so critical to the way that they approach questions, right? And the way that we have conversations. And that's really a key phenomenon that we need to learn how to embrace better as academics and just more uh, globally. 
In addition to that, right, we need to think about how we're going to reach out of our comfort zone. And I think uh, Crystal did an amazing job of talking about how she identified her lack of knowledge in an environment about people in that environment, how she went into it head first, how she had uncomfortable, challenging questions, how she learned and how she kept coming back and she had her ears open and how she listened to people. And she listened to how those people interact with the land and she brought that end to being a part of the critical zone. And that has steered her um, science to be something much stronger than it ever was before. Finally, Holly came back to us and she gave us some ideas. How do we really write proposals that are gonna persuade our different entities to help us conduct critical zone science, right? There's a lot of different processes that are going on there, but we need to think about them in general. And then finally, well, Roll, uh, Roll gave us a really great understanding of this idea. We, ha we are composed of two different sides of our brain that are not at odds, but should be at harmony, right? We should both so celebrate the fact that we can be creative, but that we can also be very analytical. And that's a really important factor of what needs to be considered. And, th and then finally, that we also need to be able to think about where we're at. We need to help each other out a lot with this. Maybe thinking about how we check each other and asking ourselves, are we going down or are we going up in this one? Where are we at? What's the, what is our perspective? And how do we create our own boundaries for thinking about these things? And I think it's also really critically important to acknowledge, right? Most people getting, um, going through graduate school are not going to become um, assistant professors, right? Or go down the academic pathway. They're going to be vital, important individuals who are helping to steer management of our environments across uh, the world. Parts of the USGS, parts of the EPA, parts of different NGOs. These are people who are helping to steer policy. So what I'm hoping to, to promote um, for you is that these are our goals, but these are our goals over the next five years. And we're super thrilled that you started this journey with us, but we're hoping that you'll continue to work with us to diversify the critical zone community and help us to address the problems that we see that are out there in the world. And so with that, I just wanna give a super huge thanks to all of our speakers. You know, they're wonder and, and thank them for sharing their wonderful experiences with us. So that's all I have for now.